Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we'll be solving a problem from the electrostatics portion of SBD. So we have a small electrically charged bead that can slide on a circular frictionless thin insulating ring and we have a small electric dipole having a dipole moment of P fixed at the center of this circle. Now initially the bead is at the perpendicular bisector of the dipole and we have to find the speed of the bead when it reaches the position of theta as shown in the figure. So do give this problem a try and then come back later for the solution. So first we are going to discuss the electric field due to a dipole at an angular position of theta and at a distance of r from the dipole. So let's say we have a point dipole whose dipole moment is p. If we want to determine the electric field at an angular position of theta which is at a radial distance of r from the dipole, first of all it will have two components. One is in the radial direction which I termed it as er and one will be in the theta direction which is perpendicular to the radial direction and I named it as the e theta. So first information that is needed is that you need to be aware of the fact that the potential due to the dipole at any point p taking the reference as the equatorial position is kp cos theta divided by r square. If you take the equatorial plane at each point on the plane the potential is zero so that's our reference. So with reference to that at any angular position of theta, the potential is kp cos theta divided by r squared. So now as we have the potential as a function of theta and r, all we have to do is find the negative gradient of the potential to get the electric field. So the gradient in polar coordinates take this particular form by the r, if you want the r cap component of the electric field. So the gradient in polar coordinates is dou by dou r in the r cap direction and 1 by r dou by dou theta in the theta cap direction. So if you carry out the differentiation, you'll end up with the you'll get the radial component of electric field as 2 kp cos theta divided by r cube and the theta component as kp sin theta divided by r cube. Now, even if you don't understand gradients, what you can do is you can break down this put dipole moment p along the radius vector. So that would be p cos theta. And now relative to this dipole, this point p is, an, is in its axial position. So its electric field will be 2 kp divided by r cube, which is exactly what we have here. So similarly, you can do it for the theta as well. So this is the electric field uh, due to a dipole in polar coordinates basically. Once we are okay with that, now all we have to do is energy conservation. So initially the charged particle was in the equatorial position relative to the dipole. So that as it's our reference, the potential energy of the charge would be zero. And initially there was no speed carried by the charge. So the kinetic energy would be zero. And finally the charged particle makes an angle of theta with the dipole axis. So its potential, the potential at that point due to the dipole is kp cos theta divided by r squared times it with the charge and you have the potential energy of the charge. And finally, let's say the velocity of the bead is v. So its kinetic energy would be half mv squared. And once you carry out the calculation, you'll get the speed of the charge particle as this particular value. In option b, they were asking us about the normal reaction exerted by the ring on the charge particle. So as we just discussed in the previous speech, there'll be two components uh, of the electric field due to the dipole on the charged particle, one in the radial direction and one in the theta direction. So the force due to the radial component would be Q times ER and the force due to the theta component would be Q times E theta. So now uh, we can write sigma F equals MA uh, along the radial direction. So N minus QER should be mass times the acceleration MB squared by R. And once you carry out the calculations, uh, you'll get a surprising answer as the normal reaction turns out to be zero. Now what this means is that irrespective of the angular position you take, the normal reaction will always come out to be zero. And what that means is the presence or absence of this ring would make no difference in the motion of the charged particle, right? Because the normal reaction is always zero. So, so that's what option D was asking actually. How would the bead move in the absence of the ring? And the answer to that is it won't make any difference because the normal reaction is always zero. And option A and option B we determined just right now. And option C is asking us, how does the bead move after it is released? Where will the bead first stop after being released? So as we just determined, it will move along the ring in a circular path. And again, by energy conservation, we can easily say that the charge particle would come to rest at the opposite point in the equatorial plane, right? The charge particle will come to rest at this particular point. So that was it for this question, guys. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below and do like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.